1908, my great grandfather uh, began canning tomatoes. Um, actually, four years prior uh, for the Stokely family, um, and then passed the company down to the second generation. And his uh, eventually, all four of his sons and both of his sons-in-laws uh, were involved in the family business at one time uh, prior to his death. So. And so all through the second generation, we grew uh, through regional expansion. Um, and then uh, in the third generation, when the second generation of family leaders passed away, uh, my third generation cousins, Condon Bush and Jim Ethier, um, recognized an opportunity uh, to build a brand. And so uh, during that third generation transition, uh, we hired a family business consultant to help advise us through uh, the second to third generation uh, ownership transition. Uh, we hired an independent board of directors uh, that guided us in not only uh, building our brand that you mentioned before, but also in uh, developing the discipline of strategic planning. Right. So we have, I'm a fourth generation uh, family member, and we have some adult fifth generation family members who are involved in the uh, family governance and, and in the company as well. We've also recently just gone through a transition where the third generation was able to retire. And, you know, we spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in trying to plan to make sure that we, you know, handled the, that transition appropriately and, and made sure the organization was set up appropriately, some of which is just guessing on based on what legislation is going to be. Um, and then just trying to figure out how to, um, you know, migrate all those different things into, you know, the next generation. Our family uh, has signed evergreen agreements. I don't know if people are familiar with that, but basically uh, it's a commitment to stay private forever. And, mm -hmm. our, you know, and I point out this is really important for our employees, knowing they'll have that stability for our customers, knowing they'll be dealing with the same people, same company. But it's also important for the communities. And uh, people often, as you say, don't realize that as soon as a company gets sold, the sponsorships that we do for the, we, we for example, wherever we operate, we have scholarships to the local high school kids, usually in business and science, uh, you know, all the sporting teams, the internships. When local privately owned companies uh, get taken over, sold out, that stuff disappears. Exit. I was, I was turning 65 and I was beginning to plan my exit. At that time, Paige had not expressed an interest yet. And so I was preparing the business for sale. And the hardest part was going to bed every night and waking up every morning thinking about who might purchase this and how they might treat my employees or, or what they might do to this business that I've, that I've put my heart and soul into. And that was scary for me. Um, and then Paige stepped up and, and- It's really not about wealth per se. It's about furthering something that you've started. So a death or two in our family would be disastrous. And it would put the burden of uh, the death tax upon us, coming up with a valuation immediately, and then the proceeds to pay for it. And the elimination of the step up really is quite damaging. One of the philosophies of our business has always been um, for you to have ownership within the business, you need to work within the business. So, so that is a way that over the 100 years or 101 years we've been in business to, to really try to consolidate ownership to those people that really understand the challenges that our employees face, you know, because they're the, the people that we work with and the families that we work with day in, day out. But it is, a, you know, there is a lot of challenges, particularly in a, in a equipment capital expenditure, heavy business like construction. Um, well, you know, we may make profits, you know, a lot of what we make has to be reinvested into capital purchases. And also, you know, it's a, a core part of our philosophy is we want to reinvest in the people that, that work for us. For us, it's been 20 years of planning, you know, and um, and we're still not completely through the uh, the whole estate planning process. Thankfully, 
um, my father had the foresight to start early and um, and I've been able to to buy shares, you know, and then once you, you know, pay that off then you buy some more. So, you know, you I've been living this uh, this life of debt, you know, to try to try to get ourselves, uh, you know, to work this ownership transition. But, um, you know, we have navigated so far uh, transitions. Uh, we haven't had uh, since I'm third generation, we haven't had a huge need yet. We do see that on the horizon. And I think there are significant headwinds with um, estate taxes and our financial ability to transfer the business to the next generation of owners. Um, I am quite concerned about um, in the event of a death of a major shareholder uh, how we deal with that if the tax law were to change and make it much more difficult. We want to stay private. And actually, our employees want us to stay private. But we've we've enjoyed putting together a, a strong trust agreement that allows the kids as well as their spouses to participate in the company. They will inherit the company. And it has worked very, very well. We try to communicate as much as we possibly can with the kids. They're involved in the investment committee side of what we do. Uh, we do venture outside of real estate a little bit, not much, but they they make those decisions. They're actively engaged. Um, that when they establish rules and regulations, it, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of money on our part, because we aren't a large organization, to comply with what we need to comply with. And, and that's taking money out of our operation that, that could be, if, if we didn't have to do this on a continual basis, it would be in our company for operations, generating income so we can continue to. Uh, yeah, my dad, my dad ran the business. Um, I tell people he, he was, uh, he ran it till he was 86 and he died at 86 and he was dictating letters from his hospital bed literally days before he passed away. And I'm sure there are many of your members who uh, can relate to that kind of first generation ownership. So I've been in it a long time and uh, I have a little bit different uh, vision for my daughter. Um, I don't have siblings in the business, which is, is different from a lot of second generation companies. Um, and uh, I only have one child. So I also am now looking at sort of the cousin consortium model that a lot of ultimately third generation companies um, end up with. So I don't have some of those kinds of pressures that I know a lot of other families do. And I would say um, kind of the key to our uh, success, successful transitions um, from generate from one generation to the next, uh, particularly from second to third and then third to fourth um, has been uh, a commitment to educating uh, the family about family businesses um, and also creating a governance structure uh, that has facilitated the uh, the education of the family and also transparent communication amongst the, the family ownership group.